Okay, uh, we are now ready to wrap up this section uh, where we talked about discrete probability models. And we're gonna do it with an illustration in the so-called matching problem. So what is the matching problem? So what we're gonna do is we're assuming that we have two identical decks of cards. Each deck has N, little n, distinct cards. And uh, they are shuffles. Well shuffled, okay? And they're being matched against each other. So we're assuming that they're both shuffled independently of each other. So the ordering of one does not affect the ordering of the other. Uh, we're also assuming that they're shuffled so that all possible orderings are equally likely. If a specific card appears in the same position in both decks, then a match is said to occur. So we have two decks. We're going to shuffle them both up and then we're going to just turn over the top card of both decks. We're going to say, are they the same card? Yes or no? If yes, then there's a match. If not, no. Okay, then we turn the second card over in both decks. Are they the same? Yes or no? Third card in each deck. Are they the same? And so on and so forth. And so for each of the, each I from one up to lowercase n, Let's let P sub I be the probability that the ith cards match. And let's write that event that the ith cards match as A sub I. All right, so how, how does this work? Uh, well, we have two decks. Deck one deck two and we're looking in position let's just say position I right here. So what's the probability that they match? Well we need to all right first we need to pick a card to put in position in position one in position I of deck one and choose one. Whichever card that is, that same card needs to be put in position I of deck two. So there's one way to do that. There are N ways to pick the card in deck one, but then once we have a fixed card, we have only one choice in deck two. And then for the remaining, uh, we have n minus one cards in both decks and we can put them in any order we want in these remaining positions. We don't, they don't have to be the same, okay? So there are n minus one factorial orderings in both decks and we can square that because the two de there's two decks. So n minus one factorial in deck one, n minus one factorial in deck two, neither one affects the other. So we have the multiplication rule And then we divide this by all possible, all possibilities. Well, possible orderings of deck one are n factorial, possible orderings of deck two are n factorial, so it's n factorial squared. So if you do the math on that, it's one over n. Okay, so you do some cancellation, it's one over n. 
Okay. Now, that's first question. Second question, for i less than j, what is probability of AI intersect AJ? So what's the probability that we have a match in both I and J? Well, same, pre same premise, call this PIJ. Well, now what we need to do is let's call this up here, this is gonna be I, this is gonna be J. Choose colors. So we need to pick, we need to pick two cards to go into positions, uh, we need to pick a card to go in position I and a card to position, and then from what's left, a card to go in position J of deck one. And then whichever we choose has to go in the same places, in the same place I and J for deck two. So now what we have is we actually have N fault falling factorial two for those two choices. And then times one, times one, there's one choice for the ith component of deck two, one choice for the jth component. And then there's n minus two cards left in each and we don't care which order they go in. So it's n minus two factorial squared. Again, divided by n factorial squared. And so what do we end up with? It's one over n times n minus one, which is one over n fall two. So then in general, for I1, I2, IK, the probability of I1 up to IK, which is the probability that there's a match in positions I1, up through i and up through i k, it's one over n fall factorial k. Okay, great. So then, how can we use what we already know to calculate the probability that there's at least one match? Okay, probably of at least one match. Write that as a sub big n equal to one, but this is just the probability of a union that there's a match somewhere from position one up through n. Okay. And so now we're in the, we have a probability of a union, which we know we can just apply inclusion, exclusion. Inclusion, exclusion is just S1 minus S2 plus S3, et cetera, minus and so on. And we know that SK, this is the probability, this is the sum over all K subsets. of p sub i1 through ik but we know that those are all the same probability we just calculated those it's one over n fall k and how many k subsets are there we know that from the binomial there are we so each one of these p sub i it is one over n fall k how many k subsets are there there's n choose k so it's n choose k times one over n fall k. But what is n choose k is actually, we defined it as n fall k over k factorial, one over n fall k. So there's cancellation, it's one over k factorial. So what we're left with is probability of at least one match is 
sum from j equals 1 to n of minus 1 to the j plus 1 of 1 over j factorial. Okay, pretty nice. What's the probability of no matches? probably of no matches is probability of exactly zero matches. Well, it's the complement of there being at least one match. So it's one minus what we just calculated. So it's one minus one over one factorial plus one over two factorial minus one over three factorial, et cetera, et cetera plus minus one to the n over n factorial. Let's define this as e sub n. So as n gets large, e sub n is approximately e to the minus one, which is approximately 0 0.3679. And then finally for n, for m less than n, what's the probability of exactly m matches? Well, calculated this above, right? Exactly M matches given here. Okay, so it's M choose M, SM, minus M plus one choose M, SM plus one, et cetera, et cetera. So what we're left with, 1 over m factorial, 1 minus 1 over 1 factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial minus 1 over 3 factorial, et cetera, up to minus 1 to the n minus m over n minus m factorial. And what is that? This is e n minus m over m factor. So that's how we can use inclusion, exclusion, and the formulas that we calculated, inclusion, exclusion formula, and the formula for calculating the probability of exactly m events out of n in the matching problem, which is a classical problem of matching two decks, equal cards, position for position. Um, all of these in this section, these are discrete probability models, important concepts to master. And so uh, worth reviewing before we move on to the next section. Um, in the next section, we're gonna talk a bit more. We're gonna talk a bit more about conditional probability, but we will talk about that next time.